Hey everyone, welcome back to the Miser's Guide to Ebony. In this video, we are going to talk about Ideal Land and what we should expect from this new game feature. First, a quick thank you to Aptoid for sponsoring this video. You can get more information on how to purchase with Aptoid in the video description, including how to get extra cash back using the Miser code. Ideal Land is a construction territory that is unique to each player. In this area, you can design your own unique landscape with various buildings, roads, and leafy things. Other players can visit your ideal land and write on your message board. They are also able to assist you with projects that require help, such as demolishing ruins. Now, the purpose of the ideal land zone on the surface appears to be a place where players can customize a bit of their kingdom to scratch an aesthetic designer itch but the reality of this feature is quite predatory and nefarious. It's cool to see all the interesting designs that people are making, but as soon as the real meat of this crap sandwich starts to roll out, it's going to make a big stink. What most players don't yet realize is that the ideal land is a carbon copy of a common monetization feature found in similar games. Evany has a habit of seeing what other games are doing and then taking it to new extremes. Unfortunately, it's also usually done with a reduced quality of design. Fortunately, in this case, the implementation of Ideal Land doesn't look as awful as other attempts to mimic competitor game features have been in the past. The game artists here seem very capable with producing beautiful buildings, so I think that the aesthetics of Ideal Land might actually turn out to be fairly high quality. On the other hand, the developers have a history of taking monetization features well beyond the norm of this genre with exorbitant costs and unethical balances of spenders versus non-spenders. Now this next part will be a bit more speculative as it's grounded on the habits of other games, so keep in mind that there may be differences on what we actually see in Evany. Generally these differences tend to be higher monetization and greater restrictions in terms of obtaining features, but that is speculation. In games like War and Order and Age of Origins, a similar variation to Ideal Land exists where players obtain buildings and decorations to place around their landscape. The majority of buildings provide buffs to troops, debuffs to enemy troops, march size, hospital capacity, and other benefits. They have an initial effect at level 1, and these effects are enhanced as the level of the building increases by obtaining further copies. There's no benefit to placing duplicates of the same building, so as you obtain more, you would consolidate these to increase the level of the building. These buildings are obtained largely through events. Some can be obtained by free-to-play and low spenders through normal participation in events, but there are some higher impact buildings that are more difficult to obtain, which are only obtainable by high spenders. In War and Order, obtaining the higher spender items takes roughly the equivalent of $500 worth of spending in an event, and they appear with orange text to denote their quality. Other buildings of the blue or purple quality are obtainable by free-to-play or low spenders, meaning that while a low spender might not get the highest impact buildings, they still have access to quite a bit. Ideal Land in Evany should function in the same way. Although I'm making the prediction that there will be fewer items available to lower spenders, a lot more to the higher spenders, and that the costs on the higher end will be much greater than those of other games. Ideal Land in itself isn't a bad feature to have in the game as it adds a bit of flavor, and some people really enjoy having a place to customize. It really comes down to the implementation. If it's similar to what we see in War and Order, it wouldn't be too bad. Yes, heavy spenders in War and Order have some advantages with this feature, but after the first copy of the building, it gets increasingly more difficult to level up and extend those advantages. As a result, this restricts how large the gap can get between high and low spenders. In Evany, there's a lot more concern about the gap as high spenders are designed to be untouchable by the minnows in the pond. With this in mind, I'm expecting the easily obtainable buildings to be extremely weak. While I expect the higher quality buildings to have such a large impact that they further break an already imbalanced game. Prove me wrong, Evany developers. Prove me wrong. That's all for this video. See you next time. Thank you so much for watching this video and supporting the channel. If you liked what you saw, please consider hitting the like button and checking out other videos on the Miser's Guide to Evany. 
I'll see you in the next video.